Has Kyle McCord already been labeled QB1 at Ohio State after a recent announcement that Devin Brown has an injury and will not play in the spring game? There are any he blasting that question. We discussed that question. I have an answer. You'll hear it next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, April 14th in the year 2023, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. During this episode, we will discuss what We can expect during tomorrow's spring game in Ohio Stadium. And I go over a list of players on offense and defense that I think we should all watch during tomorrow's game. But before we get to any of that, there was a conversation recently after Ryan Day announced that Devin Brown would not play in the spring game due to a finger injury, a hand injury, and he had a procedure on Wednesday. All of these things had people asking. Has Kyle McCord already been labeled QB1 at Ohio State? Now, on the surface, a lot of the things I saw instant reaction on Twitter was Joe Burrow 2.0. All of a sudden, this kid's really talented. He has an injury, and due to the injury, he loses the, the quarterback competition during that season. And I think that is the natural thought for people to have right now is, ooh, Joe Burrow 2.0. We've already seen this at Ohio State. We're going to see it once again. But let's peel back the curtain a little bit. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's try to figure out, is that what's actually going to happen? Has Ryan Day already labeled a player QB1? Or will Ryan Day make that announcement in the fall? I think on the surface, those people that are that have already labeled Kyle McCord QB1, this gives them more validity, unfortunately, due to an injury, more, more validity to their statement. But I don't really know if Ryan Day has already labeled a quarterback QB1 right now. Yes, all eyes will be on Kyle McCord. More eyes than normal will be fixated on him because it's his show. The spotlight is on him. The lights are shining right on Kyle McCord, who will be in the spring game at Ohio Stadium doing his thing. And I think Kyle McCord is a guy who's going to be a great piece of the pie, who can be the starting quarterback for Ohio State. I don't really believe that Ryan Day already has it set in stone right now. I think the scrimmages have been tough. The scrimmages have been hard-hitting. They have been competitive. But also, there's something special about the spring game. There's something special about playing in the shoe. There's something special about being in front of no less than 50,000 Buckeye fans tomorrow. Could easily be 60 or 65 or 70. I saw on the internet, got an email, Will Ohio State, the break the spring game record of 100,000 fans at a spring game. I believe that was set in 2016. I don't know if that's going to happen tomorrow, but if it does, more eyes are on Kyle McCord. I think Kyle McCord, my opinion, I think Kyle McCord will be Ohio State starting quarterback in the upcoming season. I don't know if he's already won that battle, but I do believe Kyle McCord will win that. But when it comes to Devin Brown, as athletic as he is, the ability he has to sling that thing all around the yard. I do believe this does, I won't say it sets him back. It does set him back a little bit, a tad. Ryan Day says that Brown will be able to go through all of the summer workouts and summer things. So maybe a four to six weeks, McCord, excuse me, Brown will not be able to throw the football. Then he'll be back out there doing the thing that he loves. But for this young man, he better come out there that first week of fall camp and just light it up. I mean, absolutely torch everything. Killing it in the the meetings, killing it in the film room, dialed in and locked in with his teammates during fall camp. Because if this thing lingers into fall camp, Devin Brown legitimately has a shot to win it. And I'm not saying he doesn't have a shot right now. I'm just saying this injury does set him back with how he would be right now based off him not playing in the spring game. Because if he lights it up, if he were to play, and he lit it up on Saturday, I mean, just torched it. 
I mean, think about it. 75% completion percentage uh, through a couple tutties. I mean, he was just dotting everything up to the right, to the receivers, throwing guys over like C.J. Stroud did. I think a lot of people would be saying, Devin Brown, QB1, he's our guy. The same thing would be said about Kyle McCord if Kyle McCord goes out there. 75% completion percentage, 76 maybe, a, a couple tutties. He ran one in. Oh, my gosh, Kyle McCord's our guy. So I'm not saying it's Devin Brown specific or even Kyle McCord specific as far as which way the conversation will go. But what I will say is this. Kyle McCord has all the eyes on him. Kyle McCord is someone that I believe is ready for this opportunity. The opportunity to be in a QB competition, to play in the spring game, in Ohio Stadium, knowing it could be over half full, and to showcase everything he's been doing, not just during spring practice right now, but everything he's been doing throughout his college career, his career playing quarterback, he has been working towards and building towards this moment. Regardless of what I want, what I think is going to happen, I would like the best player, best quarterback to start at Ohio State in the upcoming season. Is it Kyle McCourt? Is it Devin Brown? That is literally TBD to be determined. And I said it once. I'll say it again. I said it about the defensive end um, uh, starting spot opposite the Tui Malowow. Wow. I'll say it about other positions. I don't care what your name is. I don't care who you are. I want the best player at every position to start and to play football consistently at Ohio State. And that's just not what I want. I think that's what you want as – that's what you should want as well. I'm not going to say what you what you – do want because I don't want to go out there and say, oh, you want this, you want that. I'm not going to speak for you, but I will say you should want the best player at Ohio State to start at every position. There may be a cat from your high school or from your local area who you think, man, he should be in there because I want him to, but he might not be the best player at that position to start. May the best player win this QB competition has Kyle McCord already been labeled QB1 at Ohio State? I would say no. I will also say this. Kyle McCord has an opportunity to raise his stock, to be lifted up a little bit. Unfortunately, it's coming from an injury to Devin Brown, his teammate. But also, if he shines in the Ohio Stadium, if he shines like we think he can, we might have Ryan Day prior to the start of fall camp say, Kyle McCord, number six at Ohio State in your in your roster. He might soon be number one in your hearts because he will be Ohio State starting quarterback in the upcoming season because he's earned it. That's it. Earn the label. Don't get it handed to you. Kyle McCord, Devin Brown, whoever is the better guy, it will be clear that they have earned the label of QB1 at the Ohio State University. Going down tomorrow – in Ohio Stadium will be the spring game. There will be a modified scoring system, and there will be other things we should be looking at as far as what to expect tomorrow during the spring game. What are those things? We'll discuss them next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious snack but don't want all of the sugar and calories? Then you need the best-tasting protein bar ever. Built. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. But now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can get while you can still get your specialty flavors still at Built.com. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream bar, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter puff, and churro puff. You can thank me later. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. For you every day, coming up next week, post-spring game, we'll be reacting to 
how Kyle McCord played the spring game. Players that stood out, freshmen we need to watch, and other players that we think will be started at Ohio State due to how they performed in Ohio State's spring game. We will also have more pre-draft discussions already recorded on with Locked on Bears host Lauren Cox and also our guy Ryan Roberts. He'll be back on the show as well. So for you every day or stay tuned, locked in to Locked on Buckeyes, reacting to the spring game and also getting you ready for the upcoming 2023 NFL Draft. The spring game is fun. We like football. We like watching football. We love what football brings to our day, our Saturday afternoon, which is what we get tomorrow. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I will be there. Do not be a stranger. If you see me, say my name, yell at me, say hi, all those good things, because I want to connect with you. Because one of the things that the spring game does, it allows us to meet different people, more of a relaxed atmosphere, not so much the anticipation or maybe the stress that a game on Saturday afternoon or evening in the fall may bring your way. It's Buckeye football in the spring. April 15th, let's enjoy this time together. Also, speaking of the spring game, there was a certain thing coming our way tomorrow. Offense versus defense, scarlet and gray. The the quarterbacks will be wearing black jerseys, so everybody knows that's a quarterback. You can't touch him. The defense will be wearing the gray jerseys. The offense will be wearing the scarlet jersey. So if you're trying to figure out who is what, offense is scarlet, defense is gray, and that's how the scoring will go. Offense will be able to score points. Defense will be able to score points. Defensively, we know how the offense is able to score, but defensively, there's a modified scoring system, and these guys can score literally on every drive. There is There will be three points awarded to the defense for any takeaway, any turnover, defense gets three points. The defense will also get three points for a three and out. There will be two points for every sack, one point for a forced punt, and six points for any defensive touchdown. And on the surface, I've been hearing, I I listened to part of the live show with the podcast daily. I've listened to the Boomcast. Daniel Boom Aaron had Beanie Wells on there. And I've heard about how the spring game used to be and how some of the things that Um, Urban did or Jim Trestle did and how the players love them. I like this. This is exactly what's been going on all spring practice. The offense versus defense, which side is going to win this battle during this portion or this particular practice. And I like it in practice from the beginning to the end, scoring at times to figure out, oh, the defense won this day or the offense won this day. You may say, Jay, that's going to bring some division. That could divide things. That could provide or be a character to the locker room. Also, it could be something Ryan Day is using to make the entire team better. Because imagine, imagine you are boys with somebody that plays DB and you are running back. All of a sudden, two days in a row, the defense wins. And your boy, that's a DB. He is talking mad trash to you consistently. Hey, y'all can't beat us. Man, what are you doing trying to do that move against us? Man, you know my boy could get you. Bam, takes him down. What are you doing? You can't make that throw? Man, pick. What are you doing? And all of a sudden, it's not so much what you can't do. It's what your unit can't do against the defense that your boy is on. And so I like this. I really enjoy how Ryan Day is adding different and finding different ways to add competition to every Ohio State practice. And I hope this continues in the fall. I hope it continues during the season. I hope this continues. And I I, I say it like competition, great. Like if you're a bad team, bad offense, bad defense, y'all can compete. But y'all might not get better because it, it's just bad. Like Bad or average teams competing, it can be competitive, and they can still just be the same team that they are. Things are different at Ohio State. I don't know what the team's going to be in the summer or going to, excuse me, going to be in the fall. I have no idea. I know what the talent I think they have, but how will that talent that has never played, some of them never played at Ohio State or never started at Ohio State, how will that talent perform in the fall? That is literally TBD to be determined. Now, also during the spring game, there will be – a couple thud sessions, thud only. So kind of you, you hit him. You may want to wrap him up, but you're not taking him to the ground. 
Stud is more so um, defensive player running, hitting the, the, the guy with the, on offense that has the ball. They may run through. I think they're going to perform a full tackle, but it's no full-on tackle to the ground. Kind of trying to preserve the body. That will be when the first team units are on the field going against each other. It's also going to be able to help a player like Mayan Williams and others who are nursing injuries to still be able to play and perform in this spring game. But also, everything else will be live tackling. I, I like those sessions, but if we had to watch it every Saturday, if we had to go to Ohio Stadium and see, oh, thud, down, oh, thud, down, oh, oh, he, he shoulder pass, hit, oh, down, no. Nah. It's not the same as, ooh, Mayan ran him over, or ooh, he escaped that tackler, or ooh, he got away from that. It would not be the same thing. So I do understand the reason for the live tackling, and I like live tackling. It's just football. Um, spring games of football without tackling, they don't hit the same. They're not as enjoy enjoyable to watch. So I really enjoy this format. What can we expect from the players, though? I mean, the offense is going to be watered down, kind of vanilla, not going to show a whole lot of things. If we were able to watch every practice, we would see a whole lot more from the offense and defense as far as like uh, little wrinkles that we might see in the fall. Because Ryan Day knows this is going to be on this is going to be on TV. I believe this is going to be on the Big Ten Network. And so you're not going to be able to see everything because every team around college football, every team Ohio State plays in the fall, you may get Alabama, you may get Georgia, you may get USC, you may get Oklahoma, you may see Texas. You may see some of those teams that might make the playoff look at Ohio State spring game and say, if we play them in December, we got to watch out for this guy. We got to watch out for that guy. We got to watch out for this play or that play. So Ryan Day understands he's not going to lay everything out for everyone to see during this game. But the format is fun. I don't like that there are players that are hurt. I've talked about it before. I still believe the turf and the field that Ohio State uses in the in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on the practice field and also in Ohio Stadium. It's a part, it's the form of turf and type of turf that in the NFL they're trying to get banned because of how many injuries it causes. It's not safe to play on. So I hope, I hope, I hope that Ohio Stadium has Ohio State has plans to remove this field or get to a different type of surface. I will keep saying this for the next 15, 20 years. Grass will probably be the surface I prefer people to play on because we didn't see all these injuries when Cass is playing on grass. Now you say Jay gets cold, and when it gets cold, it gets hard in the wintertime. Okay, cool. Turf does too. So, like, okay, I understand that. But I think the things we have seen with the turf and the types of uh, fields that have been uh, created lately, uh, a lot more injuries. We don't like that. The spring game will be fun. There's a Wait for the defense to score and win the day. Wait for the offense to score and win the day as well. A lot of good stuff coming up tomorrow. Like I said earlier, if you're going to be there, holla at me. I want to meet you. I want to meet together. Maybe take a picture together. I don't care because we're back in the horseshoe, a place we love watching the Ohio State Buckeyes play the football. Speaking of playing the football, there are a few players that I believe we should all have our eyes on tomorrow during the spring game. Who are they? I got, probably got a list of 12 to 15. We can only go over a few next here on Locked on Buckeyes. I love football. I love football. I, I know I talk basketball and I'm a big basketball guy. Football hits different. Now, basketball, basketball hits different during basketball season. But, buddy, right now, football hits different. And the thought of seeing Buckeyes in the shoe playing football excites me especially when it's the end of the 15th practice of spring practice, which makes me think and go over a list of players. We've heard some of these players on, on the team have been flashing, have been playing very well, might be starters in the fall. Should we keep an eye on all of them specifically? Well, I got a list of a few. We should all have our eyes on, a few on offense, and a few on defense during tomorrow's spring game. Number one is easy. Number six, Kyle McCord. So he got six foot three, 215 pounds. The guy who I said earlier, I do believe will be, will be the starting quarterback at Ohio State. I do not know if he's already been labeled QB1 for the Buckeyes, so I would go ahead and say that as well. But spotlights on him. Tupac said, all eyes on me. Kyle McCord could walk up there and, and say the same thing. All eyes on me because he is the guy that everyone's watching. 
right now to see if he'll be the starting quarterback at Ohio State in the fall. So one player to watch to me is easy. He's not labeled QB1 yet. He could earn that title before the end of the day, the end of Saturday evening, or maybe before fall camp starts in a few months. Also a player to watch. It's wide receiver Jaden Ballard, number nine, sitting at six foot two, 196 pounds. Also, when I go through this, I'm going to go over numbers with you so you know who to watch and what players are what number. I retweeted Dan Hope of 11 Warriors. He had the roster for tomorrow's game with the numbers, height, weight, year, how many years of eligibility that Ohio that each player has left. And so if you want to get the full roster, follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You will see. One of the retweets, recent retweets, was Dan Hope. And in the tweet is a roster for the spring game. But Jaden Bowler, somebody, and I heard Zach Smith, former Ohio State receiver coach, um, host uh, Minister Sports with Zach Smith, uh, his co-host Chris Drew. Zach Smith is one that recently on his daily YouTube show said Jaden Ballard will start. I, he, do believe, he does believe Jaden Ballard will start, will start in the fall. Cool. Well, many people have not seen Jaden Ballard play much football due to the amount of talent that Ohio State has at that position. In comes a spring game. And it don't matter if it's Tristan Jebbia or Kyle McCord or, uh, or anybody else that's throwing the football tomorrow in the spring game. We're all going to be watching to see who catches the ball. How are they uh, at the line of scrimmage? How are they with their first two or three steps? How are they in different areas to see yeah, that's guy's moving up. My dev charter, ah, he's falling back. Jaden Ballard, especially because there will be receivers who will not play. This can be his time to shine and move up in that position room. Another guy on offense. I got a few more. Running back Chip Trainum, number 19. He's going to get 5'11", 233 33 pounds. Chip Trainum is one of those guys who I think if it's the hierarchy and there's two tiers or even three tiers, but three is like the others, the rest. Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, those are the that's the top tier. RB1, RB2. You could decide who wants who you want to label that with yourself. But in that second tier, Chip Trainum, uh, Evan Pryor, Dallin Hayden, those guys are vying to be third, fourth string, fifth string in that running back room. And Chip Trainum is talented. And ultimately, I do believe Chip can solidify and say, I know the other guys, the younger guys are talented, but I'm the most experienced among this tier, and I need to play more than the other guys that are in this group. Other guys offer the tackle, Tegra, Tishabola, uh, number 77, six foot six, 327 pounds. And then tight end, Joe Royer, six foot five, 252 pounds, number 84. Tisha Bola could be a starting offensive tackle. Will they put him at left tackle or right tackle? Will, they, will Josh Fryer be left tackle or go to the natural position, which I think he's best suited at, at right tackle? Joe Royer, will he back up Kate Stover? We know Ohio State loves running two tight end sets. That may change with Hartline calling the plays, but ultimately you want to be able to add depth at that position, and I do believe Joe Royer is a good piece of the pie in that room. But will he solidify himself as the second tight end? At Ohio State, backing up Kate Stover, not sure. But we can see how he plays tomorrow during the spring game. On defense, a couple of defensive linemen. Defensive end, Kenyatta Jackson, number 97, standing at six foot five, 252 pounds. And then number, another DN, Caden Curry, number 92, standing at six foot three, 259 pounds. I do believe these two guys are guys who will be in rotation at Ohio State in the fall. Will they start? At Ohio State in the fall, we got to wait and see. I've heard of good things about Kenyatta Jackson Jr. Um, during spring practice and some good things he's been doing. I'm not labeling Jack Sawyer right now because I think he is the front runner to start opposite Toy Malowal. But if one of these two guys keeps moving and keep progressing and keep playing like they have been, Sawyer might be in a bigger battle to be that starting the end opposite Toy Malowal than some people think he cur is currently in. Two more. Number one, linebacker still Chambers, number 22. Sitting at six foot one, 232 pounds. Can he run the defense? Excuse me. Can he be the middle linebacker for Ohio State right now? I say run the defense. It is a safety driven defense as Jim Knowles wants it to run. But with Tommy Eckenberg being out, and I don't believe, I know he's been practicing a little bit doing some individual stuff. I don't believe Eichenberg or Tommy Two Thumbs will be playing in the game tomorrow. So, Steel Chambers, 
All Eyes on Me. I don't know why the Tupac song is coming to my head today, but here we are. All Eyes on Me. Is he going to walk into the stadium saying the same thing because he is the best linebacker at Ohio State? And some said this time this year during spring practice, there have been times where he's looked like the best football player on defense as well. Will that continue tomorrow? Let's keep our eyes on number 22. Last but not least, cornerback Ole Miss transfer Davison Igbenosin, number 20, sitting at six foot two, 187 pounds. I said it when he when the transfer was first announced. He will be the starting defense, excuse me, cornerback opposite of Denzel Burke. Jordan Hancock's making a great debate and put, making himself in the conversation saying, not so fast, my friend. You better watch me too. Number seven at Ohio State. He could be out there starting opposite Denzel Burke in the upcoming season. Igman Osen's good. Really, really good. This will be the first time any of us will see him in a Buckeye jersey tomorrow. Let's keep our eyes on him. He might shine brighter than some people think. We're out of here. On a Friday, I got a few freshmen for you. Not going to go in depth about them. Just leave, leave you with the freshmen that I'm watching closely during tomorrow's spring game. Tight end Jelani Thurman, number 15, sitting at six foot six, 253 pounds. Wide receiver Carnell Tate, number 17, six foot two, 191 pounds. And then a couple of defensive players, both in the secondary. Cornerback Jermaine Matthews, number 24, five foot 11, 182 pounds. And then safety Malik Hartford, number 25. Standing at six foot two, 183 pounds. I want to leave you with that before we close up shop for the week. Man, it's been a good week. We had John Garcia Jr. on. We got some draft stuff, a little spring game conversation leading into tomorrow's game. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. And we'll get some more of Locked on Buckeyes next week, reacting and instantly reacting some to what we see during the spring game. Have some more draft conversations. Talk to Lauren Cox of Locked on Bears. We hit on Paris Johnson Jr., Jackson Smith and Jigba. The Bears may, may be moving up to get C.J. Stroud. Maybe. Was that Tennessee tie? So many players. So many players. So many players we discussed. Dewan Jones and uh, also my guy Ryan Roberts. We'll have to get him back on the show as well. I don't want to stop and, not, and go any further without looking at my notes really quickly. Y'all. So much good stuff coming up. You don't want to miss Locked on Buckeyes coming up during the upcoming week. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. It was not the Bears discussing a Stroud move. It was another player, another team locked on Titans. Talk about that earlier in the week. If you missed that show, go back and check it out. We're out of here. I had a feeling I misspoke there. And I did. The memory helped me out there to remember what we talked about earlier in the week. I'm out of here, y'all. Enjoy this beautiful weather. We'll have it tomorrow. Get out to the shoe tomorrow and enjoy some Buckeye football.